Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Now, I'm not gonna take much of your time. Um, this video is essentially just a recap or a recount of the experience I had migrating from Malaysia to Scotland. Now, I am currently a student in Edinburgh. This vlog essentially is gonna be a recount of my first ever experience traveling overseas, riding an airplane. Um, yeah, from A to Z, everything is very new to me and um, I hope you find this interesting and if you do maybe um, just what what do what do YouTube people say like like subscribe comment down below or share with friends and family something like that yeah enjoy the video I guess <laughs> Starting off with packing our bags, obviously I'm packing my um, clothing first. I try to bring as much clothes as possible because um, I don't want to be spending too much when I'm overseas but uh, I definitely packed too much I think clothing and it's probably not even that appropriate to the type of weather that we're in because when we arrive it's supposed to be autumn and it's a bit cold so the type of clothing that I bought it's not really that thick to shield myself from the coldness but whatever um, I try my best and as you can see I'm using um, a vacuum pack sealing bag essentially what it does is that it removes the air it sucks the air of the bag so it, it it's it's gonna be so compressed so that you're supposed to save space but if you take a look at the way I'm folding my clothes, I'm using the rolling method. This is supposed to save as much space as possible, but because you're putting it inside the vacuum sealing bag, it's going to remove so much air to the point that it's going to be uneven. The surface of the bag is going to be uneven. So when you put it in your luggage, your luggage is squared. You're going to miss a lot of, you're going to have a lot of like unused spaces, like gaps um, because of the unevenness. So if you're trying the same method as I do, if you're using the same vacuum bag, it's probably best just to fold it the normal way because you'll be removing a lot of the air essentially so that's no really big advantage to um, you know doing the rolling method um, but yeah you just have to work on it I guess um, just enjoy the montage of me going crazy trying to pack as much clothing as possible <laughs> Those packing I went to get some coconut shake as a refreshment then I went to see my grandma she forced me to have a cooking before the flight and honestly the her cooking is the bomb like in this next picture oh my god it's just so so good I miss them so much but unfortunately it's time to say goodbye um, for good and I'll be meeting her in four years and I went to the supermarket actually to get some stuff because obviously you can't get local stuff um, as good as the locals um, overseas so I went to get a lot of stuff there these things are a must like if you go anywhere traveling really the culture from Malaysian people is to get these pack as much as possible because I mean nowadays it's not really that cheap anymore it's seven ringgit like that's so expensive but people would usually stock up on these Maggie and then like so that they can survive um, if they don't, if they, if they can't condition themselves or uh, what do you call it, assimilate, no, acclimatize themselves to the food that from the country that they're going. Aha! It's 160 something in total. 170, 70 area. I prepare a lot of stuff and I don't just buy instant noodles, I buy a lot of stuff as well. But then I went to change some money because local money is important on hand in case of emergencies and yeah, it's important to do that. It's currently um, 2 to am in the morning in Malaysia. I just took a bath. It's supposed to be a nighttime bath, but I'm very tired. I haven't been sleeping enough for the past few nights. I am okay though, by the way. I'm not like intensely tired, but 
I do have some concern for my health and my mental awareness for the next few days because I haven't been getting much sleep yeah and there's still a lot to pack not like too long because I feel like I, 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 I managed to pack most of it especially the most tedious ones but yeah there's still a bit more now a few days left before my flight to Scotland and yeah I'm very much tired at this point my skin is like breaking out um, but I'm just gonna take a good look of my hometown before I fly for good to Edinburgh <laughs> So we have arrived at the airport which is really early in the morning the only thing left to do is to actually weigh and wrap the bags for protection they have set up like um, wrapping stations around the airport which is kind of convenient but my check-in luggage was actually a kilogram over the maximum allowed limit um, which is kind of frustrating because I would have to pay for the extra kilogram but the kind lady at the receptionist I should call the place where you get like the check like the, the place where you check in and get your tickets she was kind enough to kind of like let it go she just only gave me a fair warning not to do that again and um, yeah everything was settled the only thing we have to do is just wait After playing the waiting game, the only thing we had to do is to actually go to the departure gate. Now, I didn't have much recording before that um, because it was kind of like a heartbreaking experience for me because it was the first time that I saw like people crying, um, you know, families waving to their children, sorry, not the children, their sons growing, uh, you know, grown up, uh, being adolescents in the outside world, far, far away from their homes. Um, I remember at that time, my... Because because my sister was a bit late, um, I kind of had to like slowly walk to the departure gate because after the departure gate, <laughs> the parents and other people can't come with you. You have to be there alone by yourself. So um, there was a very definitely um, that was a definitely a memorable experience for me because um, I remember she was running like from the entrance gate to me. She was kind of like running. Um, hugging me and kind of like crying and honestly that's kind of like really memorable for me because I never realized um, how much I value that relationship between me and my sister and yeah that that was kind of like a tidbit there but the only thing left to do now is to actually just um, go to our departure gate um, I was promised not necessarily promised but they said that there was going to be like a train but the train is um, you know the train doesn't work in its maintenance so we had to ride the bus and um, now we are just going to board the plane which is really really an enthralling experience like my heart was you know a state of shock I was in and uh, yeah it was really really memorable <laughs> Ladies 
and gentlemen, Captain Khairul Anwar speaking. Welcome on board Malaysia Airlines MH4 to London A2 and uh, with me Malaysia Airlines. Now we can ball off. Oh, faham? No, actually this vlog is supposed to be recorded in English. Yeah. Yeah. That's my luggage there. But right there. Maafkan saya, Captain Nur Hasmi. I'm excited ready. I'm scared. Membantu juga terbang, Encik Afiq, Kamarul Mahathir. Sorry, I might look like a noob, like recording everything, but literally this is like I need to record this because this is my first time as an adult Forever in my life, this is my first time ever trying to ride a flight Like there's uh, stewardess everywhere, you know, there's lights on top with the air conditioner There's a screen in front of me, like I keep I keep playing with all of them really um, But nonetheless, despite the awe of the environment, the only thing left to do is to wait for the departure <laughs> Okay, so as a first timer, um, the departure process wasn't really that great. I feel like I can vomit at any time. Um, yeah, I feel dizzy. Um, the cupping of the ear, or that's kind of like how I describe it. Basically, the pressure affecting your ear that was like one of the worst things that could possibly happen. Thankful, thankfully, I didn't vomit. Um, people suggested that I should um, like gulp or swallow, and that should help with the cupping of the ear. But for me, that didn't work. What works better is that actually yawning. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I'm tired or anything, but I yawn so much during the departure. Um, yeah, I saw really cute moments of people holding hands together. That's really sweet. And my friends, definitely, they are like, you know, they get the best of everything because they sit beside a window, so they get to record everything. Oh, I'm really jealous of them. <laughs> apologize first because everything is going to be uh, most of the recording will be in flight it's my first time so i had to record everything just fast forward if you want to how's the taste
So here's just a short recap of my experience riding with Malaysia Airlines. Their hospitality was so great, but um, they kept us well fed, but the food was kind of mediocre. It's not really that interesting. But I remember I was so exhausted throughout the flight. That was kind of like the highlight of the event. Um, there was nothing to do essentially, even though they provided us with a monitor and movies to watch. But um, they don't have the movies that I wanted to watch, which is Harry Potter. I don't know why they removed it for some reason. Um, I did download games and movies to watch on my tablet, but I simply wasn't in the mood to watch any of them. Yeah, so I was kind of bored, so it was kind of exhausting to be in that situation. I slept for a good amount of time, and even though I woke up quite late, there was still a lot of time left before we landed. So yeah, definitely a boring experience. Gentlemen, we will be landing shortly. Please return to your seat. Put your seat back upright seat belt and fasten upright. your seat belt. Secure your train. We are landing. Finally, after how many hours? Fourteen. Eh? No, actually, actually, it was quite quick. Thirteen hours. No, because we're supposed to arrive at 4.15, now it's 4 almost. Yeah. Ooh. We have arrived. A lot of peoples. Peoples. So we have landed at Heathrow Airport. Now, because we were sitting in the middle, I can't see outside, so um, I didn't know how it looked like from outside. But when I stepped like into the, um, I don't know what to call this, the gate, I guess, I didn't realize the scale of how big Heathrow Airport is like it's so big. I didn't realize it. There was a lot of people as well, um, but those types of people are the types of people that is like landing and you know the ones that actually stops at Heathrow. I'm not stopping at Heathrow. I'm actually taking an interconnecting flight to Edinburgh. So Malaysia to Heathrow to Edinburgh. So that's like how it works. Welcome to Heathrow. Um, for sure. Okay, when we touch down at Heathrow, the first thing that I've noticed is that the temperature is not as different than Malaysia. Like 30 to 33 degrees Celsius, I've mentioned in the video as well. So it's not that different than Malaysia's temperature, but um, anyways, I still continued on. Um, the f one of the other things that struck me was that it's so beautiful. The um, atmosphere in Heathrow, essentially. Like, I was like, I was enchanted by how beautiful the scenery can be. Like, um, I, I don't understand why Malaysia does doesn't have the same type of um, scenery. Uh, we do have very wide landscapes that's one thing that is kind of similar but we don't have that really bluish intense blue color of like the atmosphere which is kind of like weird because um, we have always been thought that oh this sky looks blue but it doesn't really look blue in Malaysia it looks more of a light blue almost grayish but that I realize is because we have a lot of pollution in Malaysia and henceforth haze is a very common problem um, yeah, much like how Japan always have um, earthquakes and tsunamis, we always have haze. <laughs> British Airways. Now, 
now if i remember correctly we were given like around three to four hours before our next interconnecting flight um yeah it wasn't really a lot of time i thought that it was a lot of time um but considering how big heathrow is um the amount of time it takes to move from our arrival location to the din to to the next departing gate takes quite a long time actually we didn't we, we weren't stopped by anything um it just that everything takes a long time yeah and um the security gate process the security thingy that happens when when you arrive um inter internationally um i was stopped as well because they were concerned about uh, my cough syrup i didn't bring a cough syrup because uh, it was in my med kit yeah, so that was, it wasn't confiscated, I just had to relocate it into the actual liquids bag But everything was okay, there was no problem at all, I was just stopped for a while But everything took quite some time And therefore, I didn't have much time available to just explore a lot of the shops nearby um, But one thing I can say is that the shops are very reminiscent of what Malaysia have in their malls We are very well known to have big and massive malls we have a lot of malls as well so it's not that different but yeah i don't really have much available time remaining to actually go and see stuff and whatever maybe one day is the interconnecting flight between Heathrow Airport to Edinburgh Airport now if I'm not mistaken it didn't take that long uh, it was around less than uh, less than an hour Um, yeah because I remember I was recording some videos and took some pictures and then I noticed that we arrived like that quick um, I was fortunate enough to be seated uh, beside a window so that I can record everything thank God um, and yeah Look at the size of the airport, like literally, Heathrow Airport is really big and this is just one part of the airport itself, if I'm not mistaken. But the next few clips are gonna be, are gonna include like the golden hour, so I guess, enjoy!
Okay, so enough of that montage, it's basically overused at this point, but I'm just gonna give a quick rundown of my experience with British Airways. It was nice, um, they gave us a bottle of water and also some peanuts to munch on the flight while we were waiting. Um, they also provide paid drinks and also snacks. Obviously, it's a domestic flight, you can't compare it with the Malaysian Airlines because Malaysian Airlines is um, international. But they were still caring for us, um, it was a nice flight overall. But the leg room is so much more smaller compared to Malaysian Airlines. I thought that was the type of um, flight that we would take if uh, back in Malaysia. But it wasn't. Um, this was much smaller. But thank god I'm not that tall because if I were to be any taller, I wouldn't fit at all in that place. But thank god I did. Um, but yeah, it was a nice flight. Um, I wasn't really much affected by the landing and also the departure of the flight as much as I did um, during Malaysian Airlines. But overall, it's still a nice thing because I got to see the golden hour and the environment and all. It's really nice. Okay, so that's the end of the vlog. Unfortunately, I don't have any more footage to show you guys. But one thing I should say is that when I arrived at Edinburgh, something really did happen. Um, and it kind of like traumatized me with flying, obviously. Um, so if you notice, at the uh, during the last footage of this video, um, a lot of my friends are bringing like their bags, obviously, their luggage bags, their cabin bags, um, their check-in bags on like those um, push cart thingies when you can that you can actually push uh, when you try to bring a lot of luggage. Um, if you notice on my push cart, there's not really much stuff there, and that's because my check-in bag didn't arrive. So supposedly. Uh, British Airways was supposed to be the one receiving the bag in Edinburgh because our bags were supposed to go on a uh, one trip, direct trip from Malaysia to Scotland and the recipient was supposed to be uh, the, the receiver who is supposed to operate the receiving process is British Airways so when we arrived that night um, obviously there was, not, there was not a lot of people around because it was closing down um, for the night we waited around the conveyor belt thingy for our bags and we waited quite a while and I can't find mine and this is not just for me um, two of my friends faced the same thing as well so in total out of all people there were three people that were affected by this our check-in luggage we can't find them at all and it was a big issue for me because a lot of my essentials for like what seven days um, a lot of my essentials are actually in that bag um, because I thought, you know, it will arrive together with me. However, it didn't and I had to survive for around two days, if I'm not mistaken, it's either two days or three days without my luggage at all. So food was in there that was supposed to last for like three to four days, gone. I, I couldn't have them. Um, Clothing, that's the most important part because I arrived with my uh, official clothing that we were supposed to wear when we departed from Malaysia. So um, stinky as it is, I had to wear the same clothing the next day, the next morning uh, because I went out because I still ha I still can go buy stuff. So I went out that the next morning to go buy some clothes at Primark. But yeah, it was, it was definitely not fun because um, there was nothing to unpack really because everyone else was like happy and they were trying to get cozy and comfortable but my luggage didn't arrive and that was um, a big issue. Um, so we did report to the um, like, just like this person behind the counter. Um, this, uh, so we complained to the person and they gave us this kind of like receipt it looks like a receipt to me but essentially the details of the flight that the check-in bag was in and um it had some information about it so she was uh she apologized for it so obviously um and she said that we can absolutely spend on anything that we want especially on essentials clothing um 
you know, uh, toilet stuff, uh, all of those things I could spend on. And if I keep the receipts, I can actually reimburse um, by contacting them through like a specific web page thingy. Like I have to go on the official website and I have to fill out a form. That way I could actually get reimbursement of anything that I've spent while waiting for my luggage to arrive. And um, yeah, it was delayed for two days if I'm not mistaken. Um, because we arrived on a Saturday. Um, yeah, because we arrived on a Saturday, uh, I don't think the process is that quick enough, you know, on the weekends to actually deliver our luggage. So I got my luggage on the second day. So and by that time, I was already well pampered and I was okay at the time. But the first night was really rough. And I couldn't take a bath. I couldn't literally, I couldn't do anything really. And my face, again, I was breaking out. So it, was, it sucked. It sucked a lot. Um, but I got my luggage and um, I kept some of my receipts. This is kind of like my mistake. And probably this should be like a lesson for anybody that's watching. If you're traveling and you brought your cargo back with you, your check-in luggage, if it doesn't arrive, do check the credentials and also the rules and regulations um, on the official websites of the uh, official flight partner or flight provider that you're in because in some ways you can actually get some kind of reimbursement for anything that happened during the flight. Now, usually those types of reimbursement are specifically for those who actually have bought, um, what do you call, travel insurance. So if you have travel insurance, um, it will cover more of anything that happened during your flight. For example, if your check-in luggage is lost or something like that, or parts or items in your check-in luggage were gone, for example, um, travel insurance can definitely cover a lot more than the basics. Um, but I didn't have a travel insurance. Um, but British Airways themselves has a um, like rules and regulations about that. They cover up to... 1,000 pounds if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the stuff that I bought um, which amounted up to like almost 150 pounds if I'm not mistaken, all of them are actually reimbursed back which is nice. Um, yeah, but I had to survive a night without those type of things and um, yeah, let that be a lesson for all of you who are watching this. Make sure the essentials are ready prepped inside your bag as well. Yeah, like your carry-in luggage, make sure you have stuff in there um that is essential to you maybe a clothing or two or maybe like a soap or something because i literally had nothing to prepare for that night and it was freezing cold imagine um moving from malaysia to edinburgh um very different climate very different everything um i didn't know how to operate the heater as well so i was sleeping basically in cold nothing because i literally have nothing thank god that i do have alumni or sorry not alumni i do have seniors here that actually they do lend me a lot of their um items for example they lent me their duvets which was nice at least i could get some protection from the cold because i didn't know how to operate the heater um and pillows as well and that's really nice um yeah that's one of the major issues I had flying. It's also one of the things that kept me from really experiencing as a first time uh, traveling overseas um, and especially experiencing Edinburgh at its finest because that really, really like, because I was so worried because I packed that for quite some time um, and a lot of effort has been put into packing those items. Um, I do have a lot of um, stuff that I bought that was quite important to me and if that thing is gone, I do not have travel insurance to cover that. And um, yeah, it's just basically nerve-wracking to just go th sit through all of that. But now, it's fine. I'm doing well. And I'm curr currently, as you're watching this, I'm already four months in living in Edinburgh. Yes, I know. It's very late to post this video. Um, but yeah. That's just my experience as a first timer traveling from Malaysia to Edinburgh. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe and goodbye.